Yeah, I'd like to work. You know, there's always that guy that comes up here and says, all right, everybody, it's time to stop having a great time, and we're going to have a Bible class now. <laughs> well, I got the privilege of doing that this morning, and it is a privilege to be here today, and I, it is great to see you guys. I mean, it is really great to see you guys. I even recognize most of you wearing a mask. You know, it, that's kind of scary when you think about it, but I'm really, really, really happy that you guys are here. We look forward to getting our classes going and get things back to as normal a situation as we possibly can. Uh, we just have to wait and play things by ear to see how things develop. But right now, we feel really confident about what we're doing. We feel really good, and we hope to be able to continue doing it for a long time. I want to start us with a quick prayer, thanking the Lord for being here. Then we'll get into our class. Father, you blessed us in so many ways. One of the greatest blessings we have right now is being together as your family on this earth and knowing the salvation that we have through your son Christ. Knowing the, the joys we have to be able to look into your word and find out the pattern that you've given us to live by. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that and we praise you for the insight that you have into the affairs of mankind. We praise you for the way you prepared the teaching we have today and for the word that he's going to present to us. Open our hearts and minds, Father, that as we hear these messages, that we will mean something to us and it will take root in our lives and, and grow and make us become closer and better people in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Well, good morning. This is a privilege indeed uh, to be able to be back together. Uh, I love looking out and seeing the numbers already, um, thinking that that's just going to increase and continue to grow. Uh, looking forward to that very, very much. Uh, as you can see on the screen in front of you, we will be doing just a, a short little series on better, deeper, stronger. We're going to do three. Uh, I get to do the first one, and then we've got two more coming on the heels of that. And then after that little three-part series, we will uh, be looking at Second Peter and Jude. Now, I don't know the last time, at least around here, I can't remember the last time, we've actually looked at Second Peter and Jude. Uh, and there are some really important warnings uh, to be faithful to make sure that you continue to follow the Word of God. So that, that's going to be, I think it's going to be a good study. I think it's going to be helpful to us. And so that gives you a little bit of a heads up. Um, starting at the end of this month, we'll begin that. So go ahead and be reading. It won't take you very long. You don't have a lot of chapters to have to read. And if you find more than one chapter in you, you've got the wrong book. <laughs> but it's, it's uh, somebody else has written some more things in there. You must be reading a commentary or something. It's funny to me that a lot of the, the commentators, that they can write, you know, a 600-page book on a one-chapter book in the Bible. Uh, you know, I, may, I don't know, Pharisees and scribes or something like that. And that did they, they used to do that a long time ago, didn't they? So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. We're looking forward to that. Uh, that particular series is going to be called Watch Out, uh, and I think it's appropriately named. Uh, currently, because of the numbers and everything else, remember, uh, we've actually got three classes in here. The Annex class, uh, our hospitality class is meeting in here with us, and the ones from the library are meeting in here. And so for the next at least few weeks until we crowd us out of here, uh, we'll continue to do that once the numbers are such that we, go, we do need to go ahead and split that up. Then we'll uh, send them on their way back to their classrooms and... Uh, I'm sure that they're looking forward, the classes and the teachers are looking forward to having that opportunity also. Um, when you hear better, does that always communicate? In fact, the ads on TV are always talking about new and improved, right? It may be new, but how often have we gotten those products home and found out 
improved probably wasn't, you know, it was a nice advertisement. It made you think about it. It made you get it. But maybe that wasn't the right word. Better doesn't always show up simply because they advertise it as better. So I want us to think about that a little bit today as we're talking specifically today about better service. What does that look like? Now, let me, let me say up front, we're not talking about better services here at Sunset, <laughs> okay? Uh, Monty's going to preach better sermons. I'm, okay, he's preaching good sermons. I'm not, don't, don't hear me say that, right? <laughs> or, or, or we're going to have, uh, you know, we're going to have a meal after every, ser- or somehow that our services are going to get better, okay? That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about what is offered to us. We're talking about how we offer ourselves when we talk about better service, okay? And I think as we talk more about that, I think you'll understand uh, what we're trying to get at. Anybody remember 2020? Everybody wants to forget 2020, right? Uh, Some years ago at our faculty retreat, uh, Truett did a thing on 2020. 2020 vision, and I'm thinking, uh, everybody's got their eyes closed, you know, after 2020 now. It's like, I don't want to see anything more of that. All kinds of things happen during 2020, right? Things we don't particularly want to remember. A trying year, right? The pandemic, and where we have lost a lot of folks, um, either loss of health in some situations. I, I know a, a young lady in Lampasas who is still taking breathing treatments. She didn't die from COVID-19, but she did have severe health troubles and still does. And every night she has to sleep with a, what do they call them, nebulators or something like that, well, you know, that, that purifies everything in the air, right? Uh, Because of the pandemic, a lot of businesses closed. You may know of some very, some people, you, you know places that you probably have visited before that restaurants and other things, you know, we, we call them mom and pop shops that ended up having to close and um, loss of income, loss of a livelihood. Um, civil unrest. I don't want to get into politics, okay, I'm trying to stay as far away as I can from that, but the still there, there was all kinds of things that were going on in 2020 in a lot of different cities, in a lot of different places. And then, of course, we could always talk about the election, but we're not going to. 2020 was a memorable year, or one that we would prefer to forget, but because it was what it was, the, the phrase that's being used a lot is the new normal. I'm not sure I like that phrase. But what I do understand about that is the need then for those of us that for a year have been out of pretty much anything when we talk about church service. Maybe the time is for us to talk about that again. What's that going to look like? And if we, if we really do want 2021 to be better, is that what other people offer to us? Is that what other people are supposed to be doing? Or is that fall on our shoulders as well? If we truly want 2021 to be better, that's going to require something of us, isn't it? We are going to have to do better. And some of us are saying, well, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm retired. So? Can I, just be, can I just be blunt? So? Because this is about us, right? This is about sunset, but it's easy for us when we start talking about sunset to think about them. No. We're talking about sunset. We're talking about us. What are we going to do to make 2021 better? Well, I think Truett ought to do this, or I think, I think Matt ought to do this, or I think Ed ought to start doing... Wait a minute. Rather than pointing fingers everywhere else, 
how about we start asking ourselves some questions? Do we really want 2021 to be better? And if that's the case, that's going to require some things of us. It's easy for us to lose focus regarding who we are and what we are to be doing when you have all these stresses that are going on. If you've got your Bibles, open them up to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, you know the passage. You've heard it several times. Matthew chapter 13 gives us a warning. Matthew 13, I, I, I'm assuming that's not our older folks back there in the back crying. I, 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 I'm, I'm just assuming. We don't typically hear a lot of babies crying in here, do we? It's a good sound, yes. Matthew chapter 13 is the parable of the oils, the parable of the sower most uh, have in your Bible. Uh, the seed, the power that's in the seed to, to germinate and to grow and to produce. You know this text. Jesus spoke it, beginning in verse 3. He spoke to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell upon the rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. When the sun had risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Here's the one that I want you to pay attention to. It's in verse 7. Others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. And then, of course, verses 8 and 9. Some fell on the good soil and produced a good crop in varying degrees. Yes? This idea of the thorny soil, later on the disciples come to him and say, can you, can you kind of help us understand this? I mean, we, we, I mean, it's an agricultural country in that particular time. They had seen the, they'd seen the sower go out and take a handful of seed and throw it, broadcast it, as it were. But there was something, they understood that Jesus wasn't just talking about farming. He was talking about something much deeper than that. And they wanted to make sure they caught the real, the real meaning of the parable. Because he says at the end, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, okay, we heard it. Not sure we understood it. We did hear the words. But it is sometimes easy for us to hear without really hearing, isn't it? And so they come back to him a little bit later and they ask about that. Look at verse 22 as he explains this. He says, The one on whom the seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word and the worries of the world. Anybody else have a different phrase there? Care. What? Care. Cares of the world. Mm -hmm. He who, uh, and the worries of the world, or the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Interesting, that particular word, worries or cares, as it's defined, has to do with how we look at this world, how we approach this world. Any anxiety over the last year? Well, sure there was. Care and concern about people we love and, and are concerned about in other places, not just here, but in other places as well, right? People that we, that we love dearly, are we concerned about our kids? Yes. Are we concerned about grandkids? And in this room, concerned about great-grandkids and their health, right? Their ability to make a living. All those things are vitally important for us. Life is often filled with anxieties or cares, as the text would mention. What does that do to us? Jesus says that the anxieties of the world can choke out any fruit that we're trying to bear. Okay? As we look at this over the next three weeks then, the next three Sundays, we're going to try to remind ourselves through these studies of God's calling in our life. And that calling is supposed to be louder, it's supposed to be bigger, it's supposed to be stronger than the cares of this world. 
And that's why we're looking at these three areas, service, relationships, and faith. Let me just ask real quickly here. Okay, let's, let's, okay we're not going to go into politics too many. But how has 2020 directly affected you? I'm just going to ask for four or five. Let me see a show of hands. How has it directly affected you? Okay. From running and running and running. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, look at the name. Look at the hands. Okay. Financially, though folks like to fish, they weren't fishing this last year very much, were they? They wanted to, but I didn't. Yeah, well, and, and we understand. Right? And when Norman doesn't want to fish, whoo, that's a bad one. <laughs> Tim? Uh, it changed the way that, uh, that I did everything. Right, well, and that's true for each of us as well. I mean, those little things that we stick on our faces. And hand washing and hundreds of other things. Going to the store. Zoom. Boy, that was a big one, right? Okay. Kelly? I mean, I know it's written that God is in control, but with everything that's happened over the last year, it really emphasizes the control that God has over where we are as Christians. And, and, and I would piggyback on that and say, did we feel kind of a loss of control to some degree over this last year? I mean, that's kind of an illusion anyway that we're in control, but we, we kind of feel like we have some control, right? Sam, do you have something? Well, I, was, I don't know, I think there's something really kind of fascinating that happened. This, it opened us up to how to teach the world from one place. Looking at things differently, even in the way that we teach and reach out. And, and, and she said that in her ministry with the single moms, not having that face-to-face -face with the moms and the kids, that would make a difference, wouldn't it? Has it made a difference in even the way that you've related to your own family members? Right? Didn't have as much face-to-face -face time. And as wonderful as Zoom is or any of those other programs, and it is great to have them, still not the same, is it? Still not the same as being able to reach out and hug them physically. Kiss them on the cheek and then kick them out the door, you know, because they stayed too long. No, no, but, but, it's, but it's wonderful to have that with them as well. What did you learn about yourself in 2020? Don't like being idle. Okay, don't like being idle. I'm used to serving others. Okay, there's a lot to, and, and still a lot that needs to be done that we didn't feel like we could do. What else? Impatient. Not as patient as you might want to be. Yeah? Because you're ready. Let's go. Let's get this thing done and over with and get back to work. Okay. Lazy. Is it possible that we could become lazy and say, hey. You're not, doing, you're not out doing what you were doing normally, so it takes a, you have to change the way you do things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of my next questions that had to do with how did it affect your relationships? Did it? It did, didn't it? Okay. Um, I think about Lemoyne being in there in the office, and there were a couple of times that I would come in, she said, you're the first person I've seen today. And it's like, she was even glad to see me. I, that was impressive. I liked that. Did 2020 affect your faith? I hope not. But is that always the case when we don't have that mix of being together all the time? Can it? It can, can't it? Sam? Yes, without faith. I think it was a test. 
I think that's a good word. I think we, it's kind of a test, and it looks like we all did pretty well. And just the fact that this room is as full as it is right now, and wanting to be back together again, and needing this as well. We do, don't we? And we've lost several. And we've lost several. Um, I will see them again. Yeah. And that was my faith. I, I know it, but then I really knew it because I had to keep deleting people out of my, out of my contacts. Mm. But I know that I will one day see them. Too. Good. Johnny? I prayed a lot more. Yeah. Ooh, it, did you hear him? Mm -hmm. I prayed a lot more. It, 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 it caused me to, you know, that song. Where else could I go but to the Lord? I mean, I can't see anybody else except on a little screen, you know, a little box this big. So where else could I go when, I, when there are cares and anxieties and things like that in the world? Well, I want us to spend a few moments here. I guess I better pull this off so we don't go too far, too long. And I want us to talk a little bit about this idea of better service. One of the things that we're learning here is better service, according to Jesus, means aligning ourselves to the identity of Jesus. Now, Jesus always would remind us that he is Lord. Is that a true statement? He is boss. He is he's the one in authority. He's the one who, who is over everything. He has all authority, doesn't he? That's a true thing. In Luke chapter 6, verse 46, he tells some who are using that word rather loosely, he says, why do you call me Lord and don't do the things that I say? So he is not confused. He has no identity crisis, guys. He knows who he is. John chapter 13, verse 13, he tells even his own disciples, you call me teacher and Lord, and that's right, for such I am. And then he gives them the example, remember, of loving one another. A lot of other folks who came to him called him son of David or Lord. Again, it's the idea of authority, power. Acts chapter 2 verse 36, Peter in the, in the, the, the sermon there on Pentecost, he says, let all Israel know for certain what? That God has made him both Lord and Christ. The idea of Lord in the New Testament in the Greek, it's that word kurios. You've heard us use that before. And it has that idea of master, authority, one in charge, or one who has power. Okay? Have you ever considered that Jesus as Lord could have demanded that we serve him? He could have, couldn't he? In fact, he talks about others in other situations who lord it over those who are under them. And he says, that's not to be the way with you, because why? Because that's not the way that I operate. And so if I don't operate that way, and I am lord, how should you operate? You don't lord it over them, do you? He doesn't do that. What you find Jesus doing again and again is he takes on the nature of, of a servant. Now, that's different than choosing to serve from time to time. That's really important for us here, guys. Because there is a difference in being a servant, that's who you are, that's your identity, and then once in a while I'll serve. If it's a job I like, if it's among people that I enjoy being with, Yes, that can be service, but is that being a servant? See, we're talking about all the time, aren't we? We're talking about the very nature. You know those passages. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, that he, being in very nature, uses the same word. In very nature, God, what's he do? Philippians says he sets it aside, lays it aside, does not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped or held on to, and lets that go, and he becomes a servant. But he does more than just serve in that role. He becomes a man, doesn't he? He becomes a man who is accused, and he becomes a criminal. He becomes one who is crucified on a cross. 
And it's because of that servant nature, Paul tells us that God elevates him to the name that's above every other name. But he comes as a servant. Now, key here is that Jesus' disciples also take on the traits of their teacher or Lord. That's what a disciple is, isn't it? We, we talk about it all the time. They're the ones who follow in the footsteps of their master, their teacher. And if he is a servant, not just serving from time to time, but if he is a true servant all the time, what are the disciples going to do? What do you already know? If they call themselves disciples, they're going to become servants. Now, is that an easy journey? <laughs> Don't you see Peter and John and James and... Andrew and Matthew and all the rest of them. But, but Lord, we're tired. I mean, we've been walking around these places here in Galilee and down in Judea all this time right here. We're tired. Can you send those folks off somewhere else to go get their food so that we can have a little rest ourselves? And he says, no, you give them something to eat. <laughs> we've, been, we've been here listening to a sermon for the last two or three days. We're tired. Might have been a few Eutychuses. <laughs> and the, the, that are, they're about to fall asleep even in his preaching. And he chooses to use them to show them what service looks like. Even when you're tired, what do you do? Sir. You serve. Any examples of that with Jesus? How about when John the Baptist dies and he gets word of that and he wants to go off to a lonely place by himself, remember? And the people find him. Here we are again. You're going to serve us again, right? You're going to feed us again. You're going to give us more, aren't you? And what does he do? He serves. In fact, over and over again, I just got through uh, teaching through Matthew, and from the beginning of his ministry in chapter 4 to the very end of his ministry in Jerusalem, the week he dies, he's healing and touching people. Because that's who he is. That's who he is. That's his identity. And we also must identify ourselves or align ourselves with the identity of Christ. Some questions just for thought. Who did he serve? All those nice, good-smelling, wonderfully rich, easy-to-love people, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the question is why? And it's because he is a servant. Mm -hmm. Better service also means aligning ourselves to the mission of Christ's church. See, it's really easy for us to point back to the folks in the New Testament, to his disciples, and say, okay, they're learning how to serve. Ooh, wait a minute. Why are those things written? just so that we would be impressed with Peter and Andrew and James and John, right? Are those examples written down for any other reason? Yeah. Paul will talk about that in a couple of different situations right here. These things are written for our instruction so that we can be better. Acts chapter 2, in that sermon at Pentecost, you want to turn over there, a couple of things that I want to make mention of. When we talk about aligning ourselves to the mission of Christ, one of those things, I, did you know that there was no committee meetings there in Acts chapter 1 to decide what the message of Jesus was going to be? Aren't you glad? There wasn't any argument. They already knew what the message was. He'd already given them the message, hadn't he? Any argument about what they're going to preach? Well, I think, let's just get a preaching team together. Let's decide what we're going to preach over the next... That was already decided, wasn't it? And it still needs to be preached today. His message still needs to be preached. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says, I gave to you of first importance. Priority number one, you've got to talk about Jesus. You've got to talk about his life here on earth. You've got to talk about why he came to begin with. You've got to talk about his death. You've got to talk about that crucifixion, that that was on our behalf. 
And then you've got to talk about his resurrection and ascension back to the very right hand of God. He says, that's priority. If you don't talk about anything else, you've got to talk about that. But Paul will also say, I didn't shrink from telling you the whole counsel of God. That's a lot more than just that, isn't it? In Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 26, you see what Peter preached in chapter 2 and in chapter 3. He preaches God's plan and how he used all kinds of different folks throughout history, people we know about and talk about a lot, and how he used each one of them to bring Jesus into the world. Because the ultimate plan was Jesus coming to the world. In chapter 4, verses 5 through 12, those... Those disciples talk about Jesus as being the stone which the builders rejected. How do you reject the Son of God? They didn't see him as the Son of God, did they? And because of that, they, they pushed that stone out of the way right here and said, we're going to build our own house. We're going to build a house, but we're not going to use Jesus. Tell me about how long that house is going to stand. But God chose him. Jesus' message still needs to be preached today, but Jesus' ministry still needs to be practiced today as well. If you go back to chapter 2, after the preaching is done, did you catch what happens? Verse 42, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, so teaching still going on, yes? and to fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. What does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. He tells you in verse 45. They began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. You see, when Jesus does that, and we talk about him as being a servant, when he not only teaches and preaches and he does that, but he also lays hands and he also helps and he also ministers to people in need. That practice carries over the bridge as well, as Charles would say, doesn't it? Into that next generation. I got to ask. Is that part of our mission still carrying, being carried on? Yes. And have we allowed 2020 to steal that from us? No. I, I must say that I really have been impressed with the way people have taken care of people. And the calls that have been made, the investigations, wanting to know what their needs are, going to their house, putting a card on their door, I could go on and on. I'm just really amazed. I think there is more that goes on among people in service than preachers allow. And I'll put myself at the head of the list. I really do think that People really love each other and are concerned about the church of our Lord and the way people hurt. And so they want to do everything that they can. And I love that. Uh, for those of you that were over here, that you know, the fact that a lot of cards and calls and, in, and investigating what, what your needs are, how important that is and, and that sharing. My concern is, is that we still can allow what has taken place in 2020 to dampen that concern for others. And it turn inward to where I'm more concerned about me. I'm more concerned about what's going on just in my life. There may be some in here who didn't receive one of those calls. I would guess in a room this size or one of those cards. And while I want us as a 
as big church, as Sunset as a whole, to do that. I also want us as a class that we make that a priority again. Are there some folks in here that would love to hear a voice on the other end of a phone call that says, just checking on you. Just, just, just want to see how you're doing. Want, I want to encourage you. I want to make sure that you're doing okay. You know, can I, can I bring something by? Can I do something for you? And that's why I have this up here. These, these two things, both message and ministry, are always intertwined in Jesus' life. So they need to be intertwined in ours as well. Yes? Service means we must also align ourselves with the mission of Christ's church. Third, this is not one that we talk about that much. We also need to align ourselves to the exercise of our giftedness because, and we're going to talk about it in a couple of ways. We just have a couple of minutes here before we, we finish up. But, we all know that Jesus' people received the Holy Spirit at their baptism. We know that, right? Acts chapter 2, that's, you know, 238. You're going to have the forgiveness of sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we know that's the case. That's been given. We have, I mean, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14, it is that seal and deposit that he's given to us so that we have that assurance you were talking about, we have that assurance of being with him forever. If something happens here, I know where I'm going. Maybe instead of saying if something happens, when something happens. It, it's, I, I don't know anybody who's getting out of this thing alive. <laughs> Unless the Lord comes back. Okay? We pray for that as well. But the second part is not always talked about as much, it seems like we get a little uncomfortable. And when we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about the miraculous things. I'm talking about giftedness. If we had the time, we could set every person up here in front of everyone else, and the rest of us could look at them. Those of us that know them well could say, they're really gifted at... Couldn't we do that? But I'm not sure that everybody sees themselves as gifted. Well, Matt is because he's been preaching for 100 years. Well, not quite. <laughs> Tim is because, look, the way that you know, the school placed him. We can look at others in this room and say, look how gifted they are. But when we look in the mirror ourselves, sometimes we're going, hmm. I must have been gone at that meeting because I don't feel like I have some of those same gifts that others do. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 tells us that gifts have been given for the common good. That means they're body gifts. That was... What, that was Gerald's favorite phrase, wasn't it? Body gifts. They belong to everyone. They belong to the body. Ephesians chapter 4 says in verses 11 through 13, all of those gifts, and he mentions apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors, he says all of those folks, all of that is a grouping of people who are gifts to the church. They're not just gifted, they are. But they are gifts to the body of Christ as well. And he will tell them, the folks that are in Ephesus, these people and the gifts you've been given have been given to you to equip his people for works of service. Oh. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Whatever you've received, and he mentions, he lists a bunch of different gifts there, and whatever it is that you have received, use those to serve others. So the giftedness that's come to us has to do with not just us patting ourselves on the back, putting it down on our resume, woo, 
Aren't I something? No, those are meant for us to take those gifts and use that for the betterment of everyone. It's going too fast. The problem sometimes, and I'm just going to put these up here, some of the different passages that, that I've made reference to. The problem for us sometimes, or the tendency among us sometimes, is we try to determine the value of a gift. by its visibility. Typically we do that, don't we? If it is one of those gifts that's out in front, most of us would look at that and say, okay, that's an obvious gift. Paul's going to spend a great deal of time in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 challenging that thought. And he uses the body picture, the body context to do that, doesn't he? But he will say there are many body parts that are less visible, but you don't want to go around without it, do you? Tom, you still kind of like your brain? Sometimes. <laughs> Everybody in here still like their heart? Lungs? Kidneys? Other organs that are vital to the body? Yes? But not necessarily visible unless you got all kinds of other medical technology now, right? But they are vital, they are necessary if the body is going to continue to live and do well. Now, you mentioned about so many of the behind-the-scenes kinds of things. Uh, yesterday was the AIM graduation, and the first half and then about the last half of our time together had to do with people who aren't nearly as visible. people, you probably don't know their names. Now, you're going to know probably Corey. You probably know Barb Smith. You probably know some of the others, but there are many others who are servants in that program. You probably don't know their names, and that's okay. They exercise their gift, and they do it well. So what's your gift? Boy, it got quiet in here. <laughs> Kevin, do you think gifts change over time? It's a good question. Just to, do you think gifts change over time? I do. We develop new gifts. Well, and it, the. And 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 the story and the and the the thing that the scripture that fits that is. The story of the talents. It, the talent is given according to their ability, but they took those talents and what they do with them? They grew them, didn't they? Some, most. And so, yes, I believe not only can they change, but you can get better at what you do. You can use those gifts very well. Sometimes job changes causes you or relationship changes causes you to have to adjust. Didn't we just talk about that earlier today? And maybe that gift that you don't even see as a gift of writing a note and encouraging someone else in just a little we talked about Zoom. We talked about notes. I mean, we actually still write some of those. Some, some do. But you can text. You can message. You can do what, however it is that you do it. It's amazing what that does as far as lifting the spirit of the person who gets it. Sam? Sam? And the Lord, 
has blessed us with gifts. And that's the thing that I'm wanting to get to here. Everybody in this room is gifted. Every single one. Some of you are looking at yourselves going, "Mm -mm, not me. It's important to know that gift. It really is. It's important for us to know what that gift is so that we can exercise it. But I'm guessing that there are a few really that honestly, honestly do not know what that gift is or gifts. And you would use it if you knew it. But maybe you're still searching for it. What do you mean? She said none of the gifts are easy. So, said, no, oh, oh, sorry. Not, not all gifts are easy. Right. I mean, sometimes we have to go beyond what we know and stretch ourselves a little bit further in a direction that we know, even though we're not comfortable doing it. And we're back to the word service again. He's growing in Christ. Right? Mm-hmm. We're back to service. Was it always easy for Jesus to serve? Was it always easy for the disciples to serve? Will it always be easy for us? But is it still necessary? You'll see the spiritual gifts inventory. We've been using that around here for a long time. We use it in the school. We use it uh, in lots of different ways. They've been using it here in, in a lot of different classes. Rodney Roberts and Bill Tracy and several of them will, will help you go through that. It's a, it's a, free, it's a free thing. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, you can see the uh, website there. Not the website, but the, the link. Yes, you can see the link. And a lot of times you can just go, and I did last night, you can just go on and type in spiritual giftedness and it'll pull up the spiritual giftedness or it'll show you and you can click on it and take you straight to it. It gives you some, I think there are seven or nine, I can't remember exactly, but there's seven or nine different ones and it'll show you some different areas. One of those is service. Some can be giving, some can be administration, some can be uh, shepherding. I mean, there are several different ones that are mentioned there. And it's not a thing just for men, it's a thing for everyone. So that maybe the choices that you make and feel strongly towards, it'll reveal for you maybe your area or areas of giftedness. I think it's a good suggestion. I think if we're going to talk about getting better at service, you know, we've been talking over this year, you know, 21, right? The 21 minutes, the 21 acts, the 21 names, and and all the different... We could do that, couldn't we? You know, and maybe we look at some of those kinds of things and say, oh, that's just a, you know, that's just a motto for the year. It doesn't have to be, does it? We can actually do those things. We can actually be involved in those things so that we find ways to reach out. And here's the last thing that I want to say before we stop today. If 2021 is going to be a better year, one of the aspects that we are going to have to get better at is service. Because it could be that we have allowed a whole year to go by without much serving. I hope that's not the case, but it could be. Even among those we say, even those that we come together with every Sunday. But there's always the encouragement to do better out in the community as well. Do you think there are some people living across the street or next door that you might want to check on as well? I think I mentioned to you before, with all the stuff that was going on and some months ago, I, uh, my neighbors got this great big huge 
probably the biggest oak tree, well, at least if not the biggest, the most leaves, <laughs> in all of Lubbock, because they're all in my yard. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm cleaning up the leaves in my yard, and I see all his over there, and know they're going to blow in my yard anyway, so let's go ahead. And, and I'm, I'm out in his yard where I'm cleaning up leaves, and, and, and he comes out with oxygen on. He had COVID. So did his wife. His wife had had a number of medical issues, both legs amputated below the knee. And when they said, we're going to put you on a respirator, a ventilator, she said no. And she died. Not 50 feet from my front door. I didn't know. And I didn't know because I didn't ask. And I wasn't there. That was one of those knocks upside the head for me. It's not supposed to be like that, is it? I know it's not Mayberry where everybody just walks into everyone's house without ever knocking. I'm not talking about that. But we can check, can't we? We can see about them, can't we? And we can do better when it comes to service. Let's pray. Father, sometimes I find myself thinking about service in those things that I do. Would you help me to change that to thinking about service as being who I am, a servant? Not when it's easy, not when it's comfortable, not when it's convenient, but I want to be my, like my Lord. I want to be on call all the time. Father, even in this community that's right here in this classroom, we can do better. We can do more. And Father, that's not to say that several in this class, that they, they are already doing those things and doing it well. I'm saying for those of us that need to grow in this area, would you help us? Would you remind us? Would you prod us into looking around and to noticing? Those that are here, yes, but there are many who are not here today to help us make a phone call or send a note and notice them and serve them. Thank you, Father, for our Savior, Jesus, who served us by coming to this world and by dying on the cross and giving his life in our stead. And it's through him that we pray. Amen. Sam?